Hi, my friends. I got really something really cool to tell you tonight. Now, I um, went into this thing called the Buffalo Chips uh, Saloon and Steakhouse, and uh, I just stopped by because I just wanted to see what was going on. And, you know, sometimes I just, uh, I got to interact with people, even though I have a hard time with these people because they're like all zombies, soulless and evil. But I always got to see if there's a couple good souls there is here and there. So I was always like, stop in and say hi or see what's going on, right? Well, so I came in here. There's a thing that's called the American Frontliners, okay? And what they're doing, they, they just started up. And what they're doing is they're traveling across the nation to tell people to get rid of the masks and don't take the vaccine shots. And uh, so that's amazing, isn't it? See, I told you, God can align things. Thank you, their Father. And thank you, too, Lord, as well, and angels. This is beyond coincidence. I was like, because see, I was like, for some reason I need to pull it. I never stop here on the weekdays when I do construction. Never. Never do. And sure and behold, it's a long story. See, there they are, all those individuals there. They're coming out here, okay? Anyway, never stop by. So stop by, and guess what? They just left California. This is their first stop, and they're going to be doing a tour across the nation to wake people up to not get the uh, wear the mask and take the vaccine shots, okay? Talk to two individuals outside, really great people, right? Two great guys. Um, so anyway, so you got these. So here's the thing is that isn't it just amazing how god I and mean, he does things to you too as well in your life it's just not me okay it's not that special anything like that so be attention to the things around you the coincidences occur to your creator and stuff like this okay now so i want to thank you already for lighting that because see they already know what's happening before you get there sometimes so the lighting things so the story was they said they were supposed to meet at some church and then it got counsel last minute that they were now that they had over two thousand people here supporting this no max vaccine thing here in uh, in called Cave Creek, two thousand. I mean, that's a big number. That's that's a small town in some cities and stuff like that. Well, anyway, so the thing is, they they said it's Council Church. So uh, apparently, the this Buffalo Chip and Sloan here, they went ahead and um, said, why don't you come out there and you can still hold your meeting? Because they said that the council is weird, something about some kind of law, this and that. I mean, it got confusing because I was trying to get the truth on that one. They said, what are they they're supposed to do? And I don't think it was a law. Something about the church to change their mind and the crazy stuff. So here they're getting in here. And I'm going to drive in slowly. And uh, so that was awesome. 2,000 guys said they were just packed. And, and they, they stopped at 10, but so I didn't get to see all these people. And I'm telling them, thank you and God bless. Oh, sorry, friend. Thank you and God bless you guys. That's what we need is no darn mass, no vaccine shots. You guys are the best. I'm telling you, you guys are awesome. Keep on pushing that. We want our freedom out there. You guys know this. Thank you. I'm glad there's somebody out there doing something. You can't wait for the government. You can't wait for anybody. So you guys are putting your boots on the streets and getting going. That's awesome. Right? We need more of you around the world, man. We can make this a peaceful, loving place if we just get more of us going. Boy, you guys just light my heart, my soul. Thank you so much, all right? Take care. God bless. All right. So anyway, yeah, the front line. So anyway, um, that is uh, it. Uh, so anyway, so here's the deal. So the thing got canceled, and, <laughs> and you know, so they had to move out here. Well, Kirk's driving down to construction. Yeah, what's the coincidence? Yeah, Father, you're kind of funny, your creator. You too, Lord. You guys are amazing. Yeah, right? I've had the weirdest stuff like that happen out of nowhere. I met international bands. They said they weren't supposed to be here, but they showed up. I had, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's not that I mean especially they just know that I'm really hard on this mission, right? They want me to share it with you as well, the story. So actually, I'm going to provide a little information about them when I can. I actually should have pulled over and showed you their, uh, there's a video or something. And they are trying to raise funds. I'm tired of funds, but I'll try to communicate and spread the word. That, But see, this just gave me uh, confidence that you know you know remember god and the creator and lord and all these angels are working in the background you know we're not aware of what's happening in the world i always get reminded it's like you know i'm doing my youtube channel and you know you're probably helping a friend or a neighbor or whatever you're doing and there's people out there that get their boots i just these boots on the dating streets you know uh doing something right um so that's that's good news that makes me feel just wonderful so thank you you guys are the best thumb two thumbs up to the other side well, I don't like the other side. So the one side, because one team. I hate the other side, man. See on the flip side, no, we're they're on this side because we're, we're all together all the time. There is no other side, you know. See on this side or together side, whatever. So anyway, um, 
So here's the thing. So um, so they're going to be traveling across the nation. They said they didn't know where to go. They said it happened to be their first stop right here in uh, Cave Creek, right? And they said they'll be heading out, and they don't even know where they're going. So they said they're going to try to hit places. They probably won't go to Utah. Now, something else is interesting about this is that one of the guys was a Mormon. And uh, I, I made a mistake because I said, oh, you're Mormon. So I went to give him a Mormon handshake. And he said, don't ever do that outside the temple. And I didn't know that was a rule. I mean, train the Mormon handshake, but I didn't know that was a policy that had to be in the temple. I mean, uh, that blew my mind. So, you know, don't disrespect these their religions and stuff like that, because that's not appropriate of me to do that. So I'd be careful showing that Mormon handshake, especially because, you know, I understand what he's trying to say. But see, you really shouldn't be a cult and shouldn't have these Mormon handshakes. What about just a handshake of love? See, that's one of the things I didn't like. But the handshake does let you use certain parts of the temple. Um, let you know that you're a Mormon, that you're not evil and trying to blow them up. You know, God knows these trees anyway, though. So I don't know. I don't particularly care for the whole Mormon handshake thing. It's another, everybody's got to have this handshake. How about a handshake of love? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what religion you are. But anyway. So I don't know if there's a Mandel effect in this, too, because he told me a different story than I heard about the, uh, uh, I was looking at this thing. It's called the sundial. That thing is weird. I bet lights. I'm going to have to come check this thing out during the daytime. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do a spiritual read on it right now, and I should be doing it because I have too many things going on here. So anyway, so this is what I'm getting at is that, um, you know, they get their things. And what was weird about it, and I'm not trying to judge the brother, they are telling me that he can be good or bad for some reason, but really nice guy. So I don't know what the heck that meant. And because remember they do this, and I just read it. They said, you know, he's just right in the middle of the road. And I don't know what's going on there with that, but I don't really, I'm not going to pay attention to it. I just know, you know, who I can really monitor, engage, and stuff. So I'm mean, he's a nice guy. But anyway, he's telling me that, oh, sorry, back to Martin. I'm all over the place. Mandela Effect. Uh, they said that he was killed in prison or something. He was. That some guys dressed up as Native Americans and came around in the prison and then uh, killed him inside a prison. That is not the story that I originally remember. Uh-uh. And he's swarping down about something. I'm going to look this up. I might have a Mandela effect in this and complete change of events. Because the story that I knew with the Mormons was that Joseph Smith, I'm sorry, I'm telling you, I'm talking about even. So tired. Joseph Smith, um, he was in New York and he had gone into a hotel or something where I think he had been in jail, but when it was released, kind of like this Mandela effect thing or whatever, right? Only that he was outside of jail. And he was in a hotel on the second floor, I believe, of a hotel. And he ran in there because uh, the locals in New York City wanted to uh, kill him because they said that some, some of their story about that they were tired of his polygamy and, and with the, the children in the town. And also uh, that maybe that one of the daughters of uh, some official that he had her as, you know, one of his lovers. So that he went and ran inside to uh, a hotel room. And the second floor that he'd been staying at when they finally come to get him. Uh, and I think there was about, I don't know, five to eight guys or something. And so he goes running in and, and shuts this this uh, hotel door. And it's kind of a picture like old wooden uh, place or something like that, wooden doors. Well, I, so he shuts the door of the hotel. And they said, you know, um, why don't you come out of the hotel room? And he he refused to say, so I'm not coming out. And, you know, he's by his he wasn't supposed to be carrying a gun. Well, anyway, they said that somebody had, uh, so anyways, apparently he, that, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember the story because it's so long ago, so I apologize. I'm trying to come off the cuff. He, so anyway, somebody, so they finally came in and busted, well, his, one of his friends or something was there, told him to come out and don't use a gun or thing, you know, just said, why don't you just come out, uh, Joseph, and, you know, and, and let's deal with this, you know, head on, you know, instead of just coming out with a gun or don't do something stupid. Well, apparently, in this whole waiting process, uh, these guys break into the hotel room, and he shoots. He got a gun. He went and shot um, several people, you know. And but he ended up uh, being killed at the same time. I remember he shot like two or three guys, and was shot and killed. Joseph Smith was. And then they said, "See, that's where the story was, why I remember so well is they said that he was a coward. That if he was a religious guy, he shouldn't have shot and killed them." And he should have just took ownership of what their their allegations were. You know, that, like even they said even the Lord wouldn't have gone out and, you know, with the Romans, he wouldn't have gone out and just attacked. He would just took it and, and, and dealt with it versus being a coward. So they said Joseph Smith was a coward. 
because of the way he came out with the gun and ended up dying anyway. But they, they, that was the whole, you know, may, that was my whole reality of not keeping my story time. So let me know if you disagree on that. But it doesn't matter if you disagree. That's just when I know, okay? Now they're saying he died in a prison jail. That, oh my gosh, that never uh, uh, came along. I think I actually did remember that coming on that story later about two years ago after the Mandela effect started. Maybe a piece of, I wasn't paying attention a lot. That I think I heard that somebody slipped him a gun in jail or something and he tried to get out. Or something, totally different story. That somebody had slipped a, uh, him a gun while he was in jail and he shot his way and almost made it out of the jail or prison or whatever and almost made it but didn't make it. That somebody had slipped him a gun or something. I mean, see, the Mandela effects is so crazy, but I do remember the first story was absolutely true. That was my reality. That was in a hotel room. And because I remember was, at that time I was trying to learn about spirituality and reading about the Mormons. Um, and now that story, you know, I, I'm going to have to look it up to see if that story even talks about him now. It was in jail because he never was in, the, in my original, but it was in jail. And that's like uh, the, um, the guy who, uh, te uh, uh, Ted Bundy, um, yeah, to the story's totally changed from when I was in Colorado, Colorado Native. I mean, I didn't want to go there. That thing is completely different. Ted Bundy, like, escapes three times out of jail or something ridiculous. Uh, he gets arrested in a different part of Colorado, even where he was supposed to be. Uh, it never even talks about, uh, originally he was in Grand Junction and kidnapped a girl at a mall. Uh, I remember the story because I mean, knew about Grand Junction all the time. It was Mesa Mall and ended up with, uh, you know, this long story, I don't have time for the whole thing, but ends up uh, murdering her because, uh, you know, tricking her thinking she was going to be a uh, model. And another gal he had kidnapped from California was what helped him allure and she felt bad she escapes later well, now the story is completely different like he'd gone out in the uh, wilderness there was no lady with him uh and he tried to get some lady on a bike and she'd been missing for you know she was like 34 years of age totally different age group versus like 18 or 20. i mean really i mean it's a completely different story it just blows your mind so i mean just completely there's only i'm gonna go there so that's why we said these Mandela effects. We don't know about histories, places, times, and all these things. You've got totally different stories coming in, right? Doesn't matter. I'm going to go out of that. So anyway, so uh, God bless you. And uh, so we got this team. So let's bless them, actually, because that's good that they're waking people up. That's a good thing they're doing. It's positive. Give her the mask and also don't take that vaccine shot. That is amazing that they're working this. And they will be driving to and across the nation. Like I said, so let's, let's pray for them and hope them on a blessed journey. And let's wake some people up because I don't want to see these people uh, taking that shot, especially children. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Yeah, parents are rolling them in there, right? But all right. So, anyway, um, God bless you. Love you all.